What's going on there guys? This is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. The weekend is upon us. Uh, it's about 12.26 uh, p.m. West Coast time here. And the latest quake looks like a 4.4 earthquake striking up here into the Iceland, Greenland area right along that plate boundary. Just north of the Iceland region that looks like 4.4. The latest quake there on the globe. We did have some activity ramping up into the Southern California region uh, just a little bit ago. Had a 3.6 strike the uh, Los Angeles area. Originally coming in as a 4.1 near the uh, Mira Loma, California region. Pretty, uh, yeah, about 11 kilometers below the surface. Not super deep, not super shallow. Uh, since then, we have seen a little swarm of earthquake activity. Uh, I believe these are aftershock sequences off of a uh, fault system in the region. Uh, I believe it's the Red Hill Fault, uh, Etiwanda Avenue Fault System. Look at it in a couple different maps. There is a little extension that extends down here. And uh, when I was doing the update earlier, it doesn't look like anybody reported filling it. But now, uh, <laughs> now the, just the USGS is a little bit slow. But uh, they got all the numbers up there on the map showing that it was felt broadly uh, throughout the region of Los Angeles. Even down to, uh, looks like uh, right around the Oceanside area, up to Victorville as well. So uh, a little earthquake, but still felt pretty broadly in the region. And this just kind of, you know, gives everyone a friendly reminder that uh, this is the earthquake uh, country down here, living around a major plate boundary. Uh, and that's kind of the one that a lot of folks worry about, the San Andreas Fault. But there's also other uh, fault systems that run through here into the highly populated regions uh, that could potentially do more damage to the Los Angeles area than, say, uh, an eight-pointer down here on the southern end. No doubt it would be uh, quite the shaker. But uh, a lot of times, uh, these little fault systems here uh, can produce some somewhat larger earthquakes as well. Not up to the 8 range, but, uh, you know, you get into the 6 magnitude range right underneath Los Angeles here would definitely uh, shake things up locally and uh, create quite the havoc. Uh, up north near the uh, Santa Clarita area, seen a 1.3 uh, within the last hour. Uh, that's just on the Pacific side of the plate boundary here, the red line indicating the San Andreas Fault. So things are uh, definitely ramping up a little bit here in Southern California. Um, we have seen a little activity into the Gulf of California as well, not showing up here on the uh, USGS model, uh, but it is on the EMSC. We'll check that out here in just a second. Also, we got Long Valley Super Volcano uh, starting to swarm once again here. Uh, that uh, looks like it's in the area that was swarming here about a month or so ago. Had a pretty good increase in um, earthquake activity. I'm going to go ahead and check out the Long Valley Caldera first um, from the USGS um, agency here. And I believe it's right around this region right here for the seismograph station. Now, let me see if you guys can see this. Hopefully you can. Yep. Um, yep. Earthquake activity definitely seems to be picking up a little bit overnight in this morning time frame. Notice the... Uh, the specks there or the uh, spikes not specks but spikes here on the graph indicating that earthquake activity localized to the region and also to the seismograph station not looking as active as it was when we were in like full full uh, blown swarm mode here uh, a month or so ago but uh, could be getting into it again uh, these swarms do come and go right now it looks like the largest so far in this cluster of quakes appear to be a 2.0 2.1 level um, and again that's kind of just uh, within the caldera long valley super volcano caldera and still within that area that we've seen that uh, swarming take place uh, a month or so ago i don't believe it's been within a month no because most of the activity here was definitely uh, confined to this region looking at the last month though uh, over the last 30 days definitely some activity around the area southward and that's uh, pretty much normal uh, on any given month here for this area swarms do come and go uh, let's go ahead and check out real quick the uh, GPS systems here in the Long Valley Super Volcano area. Just want to see if we got any uh, noticeable increase in activity. We're going to go right around here for this uh, GPS measurement. And it looks as though these, these little drop-offs that you see right here are uh, basically uh, instrument adjustments or antenna adjustment 
uh, or some type of reset on the data it itself. Um, so you can't really go off what these uh, sudden drops would be. That'd be a huge amount of uh, uh, subsidence if we were to, to uh, look at that. But looking at the chart here on the continual data, uh, looks like there's a gradual, gradual, slowly uplift in that region. Um, let's go back here and, and double check a different GPS station uh, within this region. We can look at uh, maybe within here. 2022 uh, Long Valley Super Volcano looks like and I think we've cut covered this before a couple times here in the past uh, but definitely seen a pretty good increase uptick in activity um, since about 2012 it looks like although this year it appears as though we're getting a little down dip here in the um, data coming in but it seems to follow this little typical pattern of a little uplift, a little uh, deflation type event seems like every uh, every year or so. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it for now. Just a little bit of swarming going on. Uh, nothing within the last hour there at Long Valley, but we'll definitely keep an eye on it. One earthquake here off of the Calaveras Fault Zone. That's going to be this uh, Bay Area Fault. That's another seismically hazard, uh, dangerous area. A lot of built up stress and strain within this fault system. That and the Hayward Fault. These two faults are... Uh, I think uh, a little bit more watched right now far as the potential for seeing a larger earthquake than say the San Andreas Fault here which uh, struck back in 1906 so uh, of course strain has been building up here but uh, I think there's a little bit more worry on these two separate fault systems uh, than the San Andreas Fault for this segment right now. Uh, Northern California not a whole lot going on northward I uh, got some activity outside of the Mount Hood region. Uh, looks like a little bit of earthquake activity. So far, a 1.8 appears to be the largest earthquake here, just on the southern end of Mount Hood. And uh, we'll go ahead and cover that right now. Check out the seismograph station there of that volcano and uh, see what we got. It is listed up here on the map. I'm surprised the USGS and the uh, PNSN network is reporting it, but hey, good job, right? Uh, so we'll check out this seismograph station here. Uh, Timberland, Timberline, Oregon, Let's see if this one's operational. Uh, sometimes these seismograph stations are showing all sorts of errors. And there's the earthquake activity. Uh, we can definitely see that uh, pretty distinctly here on the map. Some of these other readings don't look like uh, earthquakes, maybe right here. But uh, looks like they may have done some type of adjustment here uh, in amplification in order to see maybe possibly smaller quakes or deeper earthquakes, but uh, there's a couple of them there at the Mountain Hood area. Uh, let's check out the yesterday UTC time here and see what we got. Doesn't look like anything's found on that one. Uh, let's see here, we'll check out a different seismograph. Mountain Hood Meadows. Let's see what this one has listed up. And this one here is still kind of showing those quakes as well. Uh, and a little bit less clutter, less interference as far as whatever the other noise was. Uh, but the majority of the earthquake activity looks like it struck late last night uh, time frame. And a couple small microquakes in there. Nothing really over the last couple hours. But uh, yeah, that looks about right. Um, late afternoon, early evening time frame for these earthquakes. All right, let's back out of here and see what we got up north. Not a whole lot going on around Mount St. Helens today or the Pacific Northwest in general. Uh, and into the Intermountain West regions, just a couple small earthquakes. Got one earthquake down here lighting up in the red circles. I kind of watch this when they uh, pop up here. Got a 1.1 uh, just off the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault coming in there. So I think this is just an overall sign of uh, definitely some localized pressure increases here in the southern part of the state but if we go intermountain west regions and into uh, the rest of North American plate doesn't look super active today I uh, got one earthquake out in the uh, Kentucky area near Dixon 2.4 18 kilometers that is just north of the uh, New Madrid seismic zone nothing really showing up here on Yellowstone right now the Yellowstone overview which we'll check here but remember it is the weekend so most of the time, USGS is not going to report um, anything 
until Monday morning as uh, far as the 2.5 and below goes. But looking at the USGS or the um, Yellowstone seismograph station, definitely had some activity kicking up last night and this morning as well. So this is still an ongoing swarm here for about eight days or now, eight days or so of uh, some swarming activity. We haven't seen any major intense swarming uh, like in years past, but it's definitely been somewhat consistent each day uh, with a couple quakes here and there. And uh, so, yeah, we're just still kind of continuing. And most of this activity is confined over here to the northwestern corner of the caldera. Caldera is going to be, uh, it just sits right outside the uh, caldera region there in the black uh, within the Yellowstone National Park area. All right, see what we got for uh, worldwide activity. A little bit of movement off the Costa Rica area overnight and this morning time frame. Did see a 5.0. This one coming in late last night and a little bit more recent activity. Uh, looks like a 4.4 uh, uh, off the coast at uh, about 10 kilometers there. So a little heightened activity within the Costa Rica region. Puerto Rico and a little spotty movement up around the trench area but nothing spectacular today. South America pretty low, dull in activity. And um, the big island here, got some movement up around Mauna Loa and of course Kilauea Volcano and the Pahala area. Looks pretty typical. One earthquake north of Mauna Kea uh, at about 16 kilometers. We have noticed a little bit of movement up there uh, recently, but no major swarms to report out there for now. And uh, of course 6.1 in the uh, Papua New Guinea last night. Uh, what have we seen since then? Uh, regionally down here, a couple earthquakes, uh, a little bit of adjustment within the region here near the uh, Maluka Sea, Vanuatu area, uh, a couple there around the uh, Vanuatu area, and that's definitely expected following the um, uh, the activity that we've been seeing. A little bit of deep movement back here, uh, surface building within these regions here, and uh, it's just kind of how this plate system works in this area. We did see a 4.8 in the Fiji area uh, at 481 kilometers deep, pretty deep earthquake. Uh, that one did kick up uh, following the 6.1 last night in the Papua New Guinea area. So overall, definitely seen uh, quite a bit of adjustment in that area. Uh, also up here in the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, this movement though, I think uh, the majority of this here is from yesterday. Haven't seen any further activity today. Last one was uh, late last night, the 4.5 in the Kuro Islands area. Oh, excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. Uh, into Russia, north, uh, some earthquake activity it looks like uh, overnight and uh, one this morning as well. 4.6 and a 4.7 kicking up here. Don't see too much activity up there, but uh, occasionally we do. Uh, and, and we've seen a, a bunch of activity in the Greece area last night, 5.3 and a couple other fours within the region. So a couple little hot spots we're watching uh, over the last 24 hours. West coast, though, definitely lighten up. We'll keep an eye on that. There's Southern California. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model real quick and see what we got here on the on the uh, scale, on the graph. And uh, roughly about the same as the um, as what the USGS is showing. Let's go ahead and zoom in here to a little bit to the uh, Baja region. Uh, there's some of that earthquake activity I was talking about here. Um, into the uh, Gulf of California area. Looks like they're still keeping that uh, 3.6 that struck in Southern Cal as a 4.1. But uh, overall, definitely a seismic uh, uptick in activity along the West Coast here, uh, along that plate boundary. All right, let's see what we got here for solar weather activity. I'm um, going to be working on a lot of homework uh, today. Uh, got a lot of it due tomorrow as far as uh, uh, my universe studies, mastering the universe, and also uh, got quite a bit due this week. That's one thing you can't be doing is putting stuff behind when it comes to lectures and, and um, schooling. Got to make sure you keep up on the schedule. Which I try to do, but still got to got to get away from the computer once in a while, right? Okay, so G1 storm looks like uh, we did reach a threshold last night. G2 is possible um, on the fourth UTC time of looks like 18 to 24, uh, 18 to 24 
and that's going to put that uh, right around the um, tomorrow afternoon time frame, early evening. So we'll see if that uh, amplifies or not, or see if it arrives maybe a little bit later. That way uh, the folks there at the higher latitudes and mid latitudes could see something when it's darker. Don't want to have this coming in in the afternoon time frame. And uh, all this activity is from a uh, coronal hole, which is uh, still kind of currently facing us, number 20. Um, it is a pretty large coronal hole. This is the latest updated imagery here. Notice that we're starting to go off, just off to the uh, western side, western limb of the sun a little bit, but still the effects from that coronal hole, which was uh, facing us here over the last couple days, uh, that high speed solar wind stream is gonna be flowing right at us and uh, sparking up auroras. Again, this was uh, pretty well earth directed right in the center disc here of the sun. One big one up at the top. Uh, that's not going to pl uh, play a part in anything though. And as uh, far as sunspot activity goes, i uh, got 3089 down here on the southwestern portion of the sun, which is going to be, uh, well, going to be saying goodbye. But this one here is a lot more, uh, a lot more stable in terms of uh, lack of flares compared to 3088. Remember 3088, uh, the one that was producing tons of M flares? Uh, that's since long gone, probably on the opposite side of the sun. We'll see if it returns. But as uh, far as solar flare threat goes right now, this one may produce uh, a departing low-grade M-flare, uh, but I, I don't think so. Uh, there's a couple different sunspots here on the eastern limb that we're watching, and uh, they're kind of growing a little bit. The newest named one is 3094. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that one as they uh, rotate into view here of the Earth. And... Um, but for now, we'll, we'll watch the uh, potential G2 storm as it comes in tomorrow afternoon, early evening time frame. Uh, we are noticing a little bit of uptick here on the uh, towards the um, other side of the world here. Notice the uh, aurora is kicking up there at the higher latitudes. Looks like uh, something coming in. Let's see what we got for solar wind stream. There's that BZ component tilting south, allowing some of this uh, speed. Uh, to flow right in. Let's see, I think I... Uh, solar wind enhancements, including periods of south-pointing BZ, is stirring up geomagnetic activity at higher latitudes. Uh, a period of minor G1 storming was observed. That was late last night. A reminder that a coronal hole stream is predicted to reach Earth sometime this weekend and could trigger moderate G2 storming conditions. Aurora sky watchers, you lucky guys. Uh, and girls should be alert during the next 48 hours. So, all righty. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Of course, if anything changes, we will uh, be back here on the live stream to report on it. But for now, uh, again, I think we need to watch Southern California with this thing ramping up. Uh, I do have a seismograph station down there uh, monitoring the data. And uh, that station is called Barrett. Now, that is going to be underneath the American Samoa seismograph station. Um this is Canyon Yellowstone National Park, uh, the American Samoa station down here on the bottom left side of the screen uh, is right here, American Samoa around the Tau Volcano, and the Barrett station in Southern California is this one right here. That four pointer, that 4.1 or 3.6, however you want to uh, look at it, uh, definitely uh, produce a nice signature um, there in Southern California once, when that earthquake hit. So that's the station to monitor. For the Southern California region, of course, we got the uh, Petrolia station here in Northern Cal, uh, just right around the uh, yeah, Petrolia area. So, all right, guys, have a good day. I'm going to get busy and busy and busy on some homework right now. And we'll be off here on the side, come monitoring things. Have a good day. We'll chat you guys just a little bit later.